Hi, I'm Margaret Green. And listen, I want to tell you about the time I was visited by the spirit of fear. It manifested in physical form. It visited me in a dream. And this is what it said. It looked me right in the eyes and he said, you're gonna die soon. And immediately I snapped back and I said, did God tell you that? And that spirit said to me, I mean, it was ugly and it was crippled and it was decrepit. And I mean, it was, it was disfigured. And it looked at me and it set a challenge. Ooh, I love a challenge. And immediately it disappeared. Now, at this point in my life, I was preaching, ministering, had a good marriage, everything was going great. And I couldn't understand for the life of me why I was visited by this spirit of fear and why it had challenged me in such a way that it did concerning my life. Shortly thereafter, I mean, very shortly thereafter, I went to the doctor, it was time for me to to get a physical and um, I was feeling fine. I mean, maybe it's just a few pains here and there, but you know, everything was good. And so I go in for this physical and I got the results that I never thought I would ever receive in my life. And the results were this, they came back after doing a scan and said that you have a, what we call a dissection, an aortic dissection. That's where um, the main artery in your, in your body has a tear in it. Well, most people that go to the hospital, they're already already deceased. They're not even alive once when doctors discover the cause of death. And so in my mind, I was like, wait a minute, God, what is going on? I remember, I remembered immediately that spirit of death, I'm sorry, the spirit of fear that came and visited me and what he had said. But I also remembered what God had said and God's plan and purpose for my life. And so after that, even going back, they said, not only do you have this dissection, but you have multiple blood clots in both your lungs and one next to your heart. Immediately, again, thinking about what that spirit has said to me, it was almost believable, but I had to remember what God has said and the things he had given concerning my life. I remember at the age of 19, I was taken up to heaven and visited by three angels. And these three angels each had instructions for my life. One angel was writing concerning the prophetic ministry. The second angel wrote concerning the healing ministry. And the third angel was writing concerning the deliverance ministry. At that time, I wanted to speak, but the angel said it, it was not time for me to speak, meaning at 19, it wasn't time for the ministry that God had released concerning my life to go forward. So I came out of the vision, but remembering that and understanding this great ministry that God had in store for me, it came with something. It came, it was gonna come with a price. And that price was standing on the Word of God and believing God for supernatural healing in order to get to the place that God had already predestined for me. Not only that, this taught me that your diagnosis is not always your destiny. Yes, the spirit of fear manifested and it visited me. And I mean, and he tried to beat God to the punch, but he didn't, what he didn't understand was God had already visited me at 19 years old and already put a plan and purpose in place for my life and what he, and how he saw fit in his will. And, and so, at that time, I mean, I, I had to decree and declare the Word of God. I mean, and, and of course, I, I did get down. I did get a little depressed and I did, you know, I did become fearful, but I did not give in to what the spirit of fear said about dying. I, I took to heart that, okay, God, if my diagnosis is not my destiny, then what is? And the Lord began to minister to me this, that my word and the things that I've spoken concerning your life, that's your destiny. Remember that, decree and declare that, understand that, receive it, believe it, understand it, and know it and walk in it. And through that, I began to receive supernatural healing from those two major illnesses. So in that vision with the spirit of fear, 
I felt, I felt darkness. I felt, I mean, it, it was eerie. My, I felt my skin crawl. And so I understood I wasn't face to face with just any typical spirit. And so in that, but in that moment, even though being face to face with this spirit that had manifested in the, like I said, it, it looked decrepit, it was, it looked crippled and it was brown. It, it almost looked like a, at some type of, it was, it was hideous. It was something that I've never seen in my entire life. But that's what fear looks like. Fear is hideous. Fear is something that makes you run and hide. Fear is discouragement. Fear is death. Fear is the opposite of love. Fear is powerless. And so this thing that manifested before me was all of that. And it, it wanted to challenge me, challenge my faith in believing, did God really say that he had this for you? Did God really say he was calling you to the nations? Did God really say he was calling you to preach and teach his word? Did God really say that you were a good wife, that you were a good mother? Did God really say that he had life for you? These were all the things that this spirit of fear was challenging me because that's what fear does. It challenges the very word of God concerning your life. It challenges what God has placed on the inside of you. He told Jeremiah, before you were born, I knew you. I knew you. And what God knew about me is what he said about me. And everything he said about me, he placed in me before he placed me in my mother's womb. And the spirit of fear comes to challenge all of that. He comes to challenge your destiny, your purpose, all of these things that God has in store for you. And that's exactly what he did to me. A challenge, he said, ooh, I love a challenge. And that was to say, we'll see who wins this. We'll see who comes out on top. Will it be faith or will it be fear? Will it be God's plan or will it be your own demise? Because understand this, beloved, fear only has power if you believe what fear is saying. And it was up to me to either believe the word of God and what God was saying, or to believe fear, the discouragement, and the things that would come. But Something, again, I had to understand was God's plan and His purpose and to continue to believe. I can't, stress that, I can't stress that enough, how important it is to believe the Word of God, how to really immerse yourself in the Word of God, read that intimate relationship with Him, prayer, so all of that is so important because your faith is only as strong as your belief in what God is saying. You have to believe what God is saying. And the spirit of fear will always challenge you concerning what God is saying. I wanna pray with anyone and everyone who is struggling with the spirit of fear. If you would just lift your hands right here, I believe that whatever it is that you are in fear of, what you're fearing, even some of you who are fearing sleeping at night, for whatever reason, you have a fear of death, you have a fear of losing uh, your loved ones, or, or you have a fear of, of illness and sickness, infirmities, and you may have received a diagnosis or a report from the doctor. Understand this, again, your diagnosis is not always your destiny, and God is gonna get the glory out of your story. He wants to get the glory. Fear will always tell you the opposite. So let's pray right now. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray right now, Father, for everyone who is watching in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God. Father, that you release love, power, and faith in place of fear. Father, we bind up fear now in the mighty name of Jesus. Fear does not have any power. We render it powerless right now in the name of Jesus. And God, we just speak faith right now, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, the Messiah, God, we give you glory. We give you honor as hands are lifted, Father. Father, we thank you for the release now. We thank you for the visitation, even those now, right now, Father, they're receiving an encounter, an encounter from you. God, we just thank you right now, Father, for the relief, for the release. In Jesus' name, amen.